Right from the beginning, the oil story has always been full of big numbers, but never more so than now. Imagine for a moment a gigantic building full of oil. It's enormous, a kilometre on each side. Now look up. It towers a staggering four and a half kilometres into the air. It's a tank of oil that would dwarf any city in the world. This is the volume of oil we burned in a single year, in 2004. Four and a half cubic kilometres of the stuff. Each year we guzzle another building like this, and each one climbs another ten storeys higher. Every day now, over 84 million barrels of oil are transported and burnt. We go from 84 million barrels a day now to 110, 120 in 15 or 20 years' time. That's what everybody's assuming, all governments um, and all companies, all markets. Um, but a growing body of us ex-geologists and current geologists who work in and around the oil industry who study this problem think uh, it can't be done that in actual fact the the peak of production is really close I believe it's 2008 plus or minus two years it could have been as early as mid-November and as late as January 6 2006 but my line is it's past it's gone my career as a prophet is over I'm now a historian looking back at the peak my numbers actually say last year but it could be this year and if you consider all categories of oil, including the tar sands and the deep water and so on, I think 210 would be a good estimate. Uh, but really, it isn't this peak has no great significance. It is the perception and the vision of the long decline that comes into sight on the other side of peak. That's really what matters. We're um, dependent all of a sudden on rapidly shrinking supplies of ever more generally expensive oil. And that is the shock that's going to come to economies uh, and the shock that will force us to go to the, the alternatives as quickly as we can. The most optimistic market and industry voices still see the peak far off in the future, if at all. They point to growth coming from new technologies, unconventional deposits such as the tar sands in Canada and new discoveries. But there are few corners of the world left to look in. In the US, the steel legs of thousands of rigs have marched right across the Gulf of Mexico. They've moved so far offshore, they're now out of their depth. Semi-submersible rigs are drilling in over 2,000 metres of water. This comes as a big surprise to people who don't know the, the issue. With all its resources and its money and its incredible kit, the year that the oil industry discovered the most oil in one year that it ever will was way back in 1965. And it's been kind of downhill ever, ever since. After supplying the world with oil for over 50 years, even the mighty Gawar oil field is showing its age. It still pumps half of all Saudi Arabia's massive output, but its own reserves have dropped by nearly 50%. There's no question that the oil in the future is harder to extract than the oil that we have produced up to now. We produce the best oil from the easiest reservoirs and the most convenient locations. We've produced over a trillion barrels of oil already. And at the end of the day, we have to ask, have we been producing it wisely or using it wisely in any case? And maybe we should be more efficient. For the most part, 
oil is invisible to us. We barely see it, we rarely smell it. We have no real feeling for the enormous quantity of the stuff that fills our existence. And we give little, if any, thought to the epic journey it's made from an ancient ocean to a tailpipe near you.